EVT, an automotive test equipment and repair service. Your place where you can make one call to repair it all. To prepare the lathe for the other side of the vehicle, loosen the trolley handle. Then rotate the machine into the upside down position. The procedure for cutting upside down is just the same. However, since the cutting head has already been set in the proper position, you will not need to move it. The lathe mounts in the same manner. Often the shutoff switch will still be depressed from the previous cut, so the machine will not turn on until you move the cutting head. The cutting arms will also be advanced in from the last cut, so be sure to loosen the clamp and spread the arms before advancing the head. Adjusting for runout is just the same as well, just press the button. The entire cutting process is also the same, right down to the silencer clip, which mounts upside down in the same position. Advancing the cutting head toward the hat of the rotor requires even more care in the upside down position. Do not bump the hat of the rotor with the cutting arms. To review cutting in the upside down position, first be sure the cutoff switch is disengaged or the lathe will not turn on. Second, just remember all operations are the same in the upside down position. The best way to ensure smooth operation of the ProCut PFM 9.2 is to keep all parts as clean as possible. The cutting head itself should be disassembled once a week and all parts cleaned and lubricated. The slide plate under the cutting head needs to be assessed weekly as well. To assess the plate, first remove the two Allen screws which attach the feed mechanism to the slide plate. Grab the plate and move it in a diagonal direction. If you feel any play, then the plate is loose and adjustment is necessary. To adjust the gib, first loosen all five set screws by freeing the lock nut. Then remove the plate and gib completely and clean all contact surfaces. Use steel wool or a sharp tool if buildup is difficult to remove. Once these surfaces are clean, slide the plate back on and perform the adjustment. Locate the slide plate in the middle, then tighten each Allen set screw individually until you feel it snug against the gib. Lock each set screw down with the lock nut. When the gib is properly adjusted, the plate will have some resistance as it slides, but there will be no lateral movement possible. To reattach the feed block, position the slide plate as far forward as it can travel before tightening the Allen set screws. This will ensure that the slide plate will be well centered over the lead screw. Poor surface finish is often a result of a bent tool holder plate. To assess this, align the cutting head on the plate as shown and check the edge with a three thousandths of an inch feeler gauge. Any gap here indicates that some damage has been done and the lathe will not cut properly. Another maintenance issue concerns the power supply for the brake lathe. The lathe has a powerful one horsepower motor which requires 20 amp electrical service. All extension cords must be at least 12 gauge and less than 25 feet in length. Drop light extension cords are not recommended. This concludes the program on the setup, operation, and maintenance of the ProCut PFM 9.2 on-car brake lathe. The information outlined here is also detailed in the equipment owner's manual included with the brake lathe. By following these procedures, you will be saving time and matching the rotor to the hub on which it turns, thus eliminating the root cause of pulsation. In doing so, you will also be ensuring the satisfaction and safety of your customers. If you have any questions concerning the lathe, please feel free to call PROCA at 1-800-543-6618. have a solution to problems. We have uh, a, a revenue generating product that uh, puts money back in our customers' pockets. The technicians love it because it's easy to set up. The uh, shop owner loves it because he knows whether the technician is his best or most skilled technician uh, or least skilled. Uh, as long as the green compensated lights are coming on, he knows the job's going to be done right. I often tell customers that one of the reasons ProCut has reached the level of success in the market that we've, we've achieved today 
is due to the fact that we're a, a one product company. We're an essential tool at General Motors, we're an essential tool at Nissan, we're an essential tool at Subaru. Um, we're approved uh, and strongly recommended at Toyota, Chrysler, I mean, the Hyundai, the list goes on and on. These manufacturers understand that if you can't, if you do not address stack tolerance runout in the hub, you will not be able to successfully repair that vehicle. Profitability is very important. We've had customers that, you know, we've pitched to that we said, this will be the most profitable piece of equipment you put in your shop. But the reason they actually bought it was because they were most interested in doing the job right and then they were pleasantly surprised when we, you know, the profitability came hand in hand. The bottom line is any salesman can come in and uh, make a machine look like it's the best thing since uh, pockets on pants. But uh, the, the way we do business is we let you prove it for yourself. It's a win-win all the way along. So you got nothing to lose. As a product manager for ProCut, I'm just really excited about the new DRO. And the fact that we're now going to be able to show technicians uh, exactly the lateral runout they're achieving uh, in, in initial testing is just uh, shown invaluable to them. With the new DRO, um, our capabilities to partner and, and to basically prove out how effective the machine and how profitable the machine is in the, in the shop environment is enhanced because we can go in and now actually see how many uh, cut cycles they've gone through in a certain period of time and we can see how well the machine is actually functioning so from a diagnostic point of view too it gives us that extra capability. Our technicians in the field will gather these four bits of information their motor runtime, total number of compensations or cuts uh, and then there are two numbers uh, that relate to the actual health of the machine, how well it's working. So with this data, we plug that back into uh, a DRO, we'll call the DRO report part.